right, the last application that we're going to look at in 6.2, which we'll come back to the same model in optimization. So the last marginal analysis one, though, is a special type of economic application that involves level of productivity and the amount spent on labor and the amount spent on capital. All right, so it's called the Kobe Douglas model because they're the people who came up with it. All right, so P represents uh, the production level, how many units are produced, of whatever it is we're talking about where we have so many units of labor and so many units of capital, and those would either represent amount of money spent on labor capital or hours spent labor and capital. And labor would be, you know, your people, your workers. Um, capital would be your buildings, your machinery, and those types of things. All right, and so this is how the model is. It's in, usually a number x raised to an a, y raised to the a minus 1 of that. All right, and so again, the unit, the exponential units typically are fractions that add up to 1. So it's easier just to do an example. All right, so my example here is I have a sporting goods store that has the following function, where P represents the items produced, production items, 2,400, X raised to the 2 fifths, Y raised to 3, and you'll notice 2 fifths and 3 fifths add up to 1. All right, that's again how there's a relationship between capital and labor in that way. All right, X represents the units of labor, Y represents the units of capital. All right. So the first one's just asking you, part A is just asking you to find the level of productivity when uh, you have 32 units of labor, 1,024 units of capital. So it's just, just fine, 32 for X, 1,000. And the biggest thing with this one is just make sure you're careful with your fractions. So it's 2,400, 32 raised to the 2 fifths times 1,024 raised to the 3 fifths. All right, and again, just make sure you kind of put parentheses around your fractions so you multiply those out correctly. So this comes out to 6, 1, 4, 4, 0, 0. You, whatever, whatever this represents, if it represents tennis rackets, shoes, all right? So if they spend 32 units on labor, 1,024 1, units on capital, whatever this represents, they'll produce... 614,400 units of this particular item. All right, so part B, the marginal analysis part. All right, find the marginal productivities with respect to both variables. So that means find the derivative with respect to x and find the derivative with respect to y. And the biggest thing here is just make sure you're careful with your, your fractions. So the 2400 is going to come along. When I take the derivative with respect to y, with respect to x, the y part comes along. So y stays, y raised to the 3 fifths. The part I take the derivative of is the x part, the x raised to the 2 fifths. All right, so I bring my 2 fifths out front, take my x raised to the 2 fifths minus 1, and so I'm going to get x raised to the negative 3 fifths. All right, which if I simplify that, this comes out to uh, 2 fifths times 2400 comes out to 960 y raised to the 3 fifths x raised to the negative 3 fifths, and that will always happen. And you'll, you'll notice in the next one, it'll be a similar type of expression, right? And you can leave it like that, or if you want to rewrite it, um, again, some people like to rewrite it with the negative down in the denominator, so it'll be 960 y raised to the 3 fifths divided by x raised to the 3 fifths. Again, it's up to you. I would accept either one of those. It's whichever one you want to work with. All right, now with respect to y, and so this first part's the same, 2400 comes along, but now it's the x that also comes along, so x to the 2 fifths. It's the y part I take the derivative of. All right, so the 2400, x to the 2 fifths are constants, they come along. I take the derivative of the y to the 3 fifths. So my 3 fifths, y to the negative 2 fifths, right? If I take 3 fifths minus 1, I get negative 2 fifths. And so if I rewrite that, I get... 2400 times 3 fifths comes out 1440. x to the 2 fifths, y to the negative 2 fifths. So you'll notice, now they're different numbers, but they're, they're similar, right? Here I get positive 2 fifths, negative 2 fifths, and they're on opposite variables. And then here I get y to the positive 3 fifths. So again, that's the way it, that's the, it's a unique relationship between capital and labor. And again, if you look at an, uh, if you take an economics class and they talk about this, they'll talk about the why, the correlation between it in more detail. Um, but it's actually a very unique correlation between capital and labor. All right, well, you can leave it like that, or like I said, you can rewrite it as x to the 2 fifths, y to the negative 2 fifths. 
to the two-fifths divided by y to the two-fifths. Again, I don't care. Either way is fine. You can write it. Uh, like I said, I would accept either one of those um, written forms. You can either leave it with the negative or rewrite it as the, the fraction approximate. All right, when I leave in part C, we're going to find it. Evaluate. Evaluate is fine. The marginal productivity is at the 34 units of labor and the 1,024 units of capital, and then we'll interpret in the last part. All right, so first we're going to find it, and then we'll interpret it. All right, so part C, find the derivative at, with respect to x, at 32, 24. So we get our, again, the biggest thing about this one is just make sure, all right, down one, 60, uh, y to the 3, positive 3 fifths, x to the negative 3 fifths. Y is our 1,024, and that's raised to the positive 3 fifths. X is 32, and that's raised to the negative 3 fifths. So the biggest thing is just make sure you're careful. It's really easy to lose a negative or flip the X and the Y. Um, so just make sure you type that very carefully. That's where, where things would go wrong for me is mistyping one of those into the calculator, either flipping my X and my Y or forgetting my negative. All right, comes out to be 7,680 for the piece of X. All right, now to do the same thing for the piece of Y. And again, the biggest thing with the piece of Y is make sure you're very careful in what is the X part and what is the Y part. All right, so P sub Y is here. So it's the X, which is 32, raised to the positive 2 fifths. The y, which is 1,024, raised to the negative 2 fifths. And that comes out. I want to type it in very carefully. 3, 6, 0. All right, so there's the piece of y. All right, so there's the, the values. And now the last step is the interpretation, all right? So d. So we'll interpret the first part. And so I'm going to do the X first. So interpreting, what does that mean? So there's three numbers, and they tell you three different things. All right. So remember, when we're doing this, we've got three things that we need to put in our description. What's changing? What's being held constant at what level? And how is it affecting my overall function? All right. So X is changing. So if we increase the number of units of x was labor. Not that we increase them, but we specifically increase them from 32 units to 33 units. All right, so we're increasing labor by one unit specifically from 32 to 33. It matters, right, because I use that number in my, my uh, equation. And hold capital constant, specifically at 1,024 units, right? Because I use that. I plug that in my formula. So it's important that it's 1,024. All right, so if those two things are happening, well, how does that affect productivity? Then the number of units produced will increase by about... 7,680. So if they increase one unit of labor, specifically 32 to 33, they'll get almost 8,000 more units of whatever it is they're making. All right, well, that's the y direction, now the x direction. So, Or sorry, that's the x direction, now the y direction. All right, so same, but I get a different change, right? So this time I'm changing capital by one unit, and I'm holding labor constant, and that affects productivity differently. All right, so if they increase capital, 
from 1,024 to 1,025, that specific unit, right? If I picked 1,000 to 1,001, it would be different. Units. Hold labor constant, not just constant, but constant at 32 units, specifically that many, right? Because I plugged them in to get my number. Then productivity will change by then the number of units produced will still increase by about, but it's a much smaller number, right? So the one unit increase in labor increased it by 7,680 units. The one unit increase in capital only increased it by 360 units. So again, it matters. And all of those numbers are important. So like I said, it's your interpretation that's the bulk of these questions. And there's three things that I look for in your interpretation. What's changing by how much? What's being held constant at what level? And how does it affect my overall function? Increase, decrease, and by how much? All right, so those are the things I look for in the marginal. All right, that finishes up 6.2.